Oh, no, 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 the heckin' robots! They've come to take her gerbs! They're taking my heckin' first place ribbon from the state fair! With their gosh darn AI-generated space opera nonsense upscale to fit on a canvas, this is the death of artistry as we know it. So you guys probably know about this already. You probably saw the link to the Vice article because it got over 50k updates and it got all these heckin' award arenas on Reddit. It has finally happened, you guys. AI, computer-generated art has started beating the humans, at least in this specific art contest. And a lot of artists are pissed off. They are complaining about it on the bird, saying that automation is gonna put them out of work, even though this is the kind of thing that we thought robots wouldn't be able to do, right? I mean, wasn't the plan all along to get the fully automated space communism where the robots do all the work and we just sit around and draw? Because how the hell can a robot draw? It needs to have creativity to produce creative works and it doesn't have a soul. Well, for one, this AI didn't just create this purely on its own. We'll get into the details of how it did that in a moment, but AI being good at art, it actually kind of makes perfect sense to me because fine art is very mathematical, right? I mean, you see things like golden ratios and Fibonacci spirals all throughout fine art. So I don't know, I guess AI artist isn't as far-fetched a concept as we thought. Now, like I said, the AI that created this art, it didn't do it 100% on its own. Sure, it definitely did the heavy lifting. It did the actual graphic design part. And of course, we need to give some credit to the devs. Everybody always forgets about the devs, but there was a developer that created this AI, so I guess they get a shout out as well. But the AI that was used to generate this art, it relies on a prompt. So you've probably seen or even used AI like this yourself, like Dolly Mini, renamed to Crayon, which I think is actually a much catchier name. Uh, but anyway, this AI like Crayon and also Midjourney, which is the AI that created this artwork, they still depend on a human to give them a prompt. So, you know, like, you can see this prompt here that I put in, the astronaut walking through the desert, and this is going to eventually generate like nine images. I guess it's still got a while to go. Uh, but if we look at some of these, so these were generated by Midjourney, which is the same AI that was used to uh, generate that picture that won the blue ribbon. Uh, so we can see, like this gives us the prompt. So like this one, for example, was a rabbit hobbit standing proudly in the Shire, okay. Pretty straightforward and yeah this is definitely a rabbit that has given me hobbit vibes and i don't know it's a blurred foresty background so sure maybe it's the shire um then we've got ones like this one which is so long that the prompt goes off the screen let me uh try to just select all real quick and see if i can't just paste out what all this says so wow we got photorealistic tiny cute and adorable rabbit samurai dressed in traditional japanese armor against the backdrop of cherry blossoms anthropomorphic dramatic lighting hyper realistic anthropomorphic again and then dramatic lighting again so this ai it's kind of like an art machine with no inherent creativity it's only able to essentially do commissions like it isn't capable of coming up with the thing to just draw in the first place uh, which is a really important part of creating art, right? Like if we compare this to a human who, let's say has really steady hands and like really good hand-eye coordination and maybe they know what colors go together, like they have a natural sense for that, they might be good at things that don't necessarily require creativity, like assembling small electronics or repairing a watch, but that doesn't automatically mean that they can design a watch or that they can do something creative, right? Like there's there's something different between creativity and I guess hand-eye coordination. Uh, and you know, creating this artwork this way by giving the AI a prompt, it's really kind of an art in and of itself, right? I mean, maybe it's not as difficult as painting or sculpting, but figuring out what words will cause the AI to generate the image you want, that's a skill that's gonna take some trial and error to hone. Like, I, I really doubt this person knew to put anthropomorphic twice or dramatic lighting twice. Like, they probably tried several different words and a lot of trial and error to get their image to 
come out the way they wanted. And by the way, let's take a look at uh, my image. Yeah, so I mean, this one didn't really take a lot of effort. It was just a pretty basic prompt, but maybe if I really wanted to get some specific look, I could sit down with this for hundreds of minutes and uh, tweak it, you know, try to enter the prompt. There's a little bit of a skill there. And there's also some luck because these AIs don't generate the same image each time with the same prompt. And finally, when it comes to using this to win some kind of contest, you have to also have good taste or you have to know what the judges are going to want to look at because of course, there's always going to be some bias with judging. So the way that I see this, and granted, I'm not an artist. The closest thing that I do to art is make YouTube thumbnails, which only requires like four tools in GIMP, but from my non-artist perspective, I just see this, I see these uh, AI tools as another domain of art. Like I imagine the same people that are complaining about this on Twitter, who by the looks of it are mostly digital artists themselves, at least this guy, they've probably received some hate, like heard you know, this cliche from people who draw or people who paint on real life canvases, because even though digital art is impressive and it definitely takes skills, I don't think that it's as hard as painting or sculpting or drawing. There's no undo button in the real world. There's no bucket fill that nicely fills in a specific color inside of the lines. There's no resizing. If you want a different paintbrush in the real world, you gotta go and buy that paintbrush, okay? Instead of just clicking on a button to change it. But even though digital art is more high tech and maybe easier, I still think it's valid. Now, I can still emphasize with the artists that are drawing things themselves, okay? Like, I, I get it. Even the digital artists that are feeling cheated by this AI in this contest, you know, I mean, what's done is done in this instance. No point in crying over spilt milk. But moving forward, if you enter a contest as an artist, it's going to be really important for you to inquire whether AI is going to be allowed or not and be willing to accept the terms of the contest or just find one that doesn't allow AI. And those contests are definitely gonna be created. There's already art contests that ban the use of things like Photoshop or filters and touch-ups in the case of photography contests. So ones that ban AI, that's going to come soon. And there's going to be a league for that, just like in sports, right? You have drug-free leagues because if you're a man or a woman who's doing steroids, it's not fair for you to be competing with people who aren't doing it, right? Unless they, unless they want to compete against you. But if the idea is like, oh, you know, everybody's natural, well, you're enhanced, right? You're gonna be able to run faster, you're gonna be stronger, and, and just everything is gonna be better than a non-enhanced human. And in the art world, it's gonna be even easier to prove if somebody cheated and used AI to create an image because they're not going to have that GIMP or that Photoshop file that has all the layers in the undo history, right? They're just gonna have a prompt that they entered into an AI. Now, where I do think this is going to make a difference is sort of in the art economy, especially the one where people do commissions and they get paid like, 10 or $20 to draw something, especially the people who draw smut for some guy on the internet that has $20 to burn and really wants to see Ronald McDonald pounding Lightning McQueen. Those artists, they might want to start, I don't know, alerting to Weld or something like that, looking into a different line of work because the moment that Coomer Crayon is invented, First of all, the internet is going to lose its fucking mind. And shortly after that, it's going to get flooded with more Rule 34 shit than there's probably hard drives that exist to store it all. So yeah, I think those one-off creations, they might be up against a whole lot of AI competition in the future. But things like, I don't know, creating a character that's gonna have a lot of drawings of them to be made and like, you know, cartoons made about them and stuff, I think, that is safe for the time being. It, it appears that that's something AI can't do well, you know, replicate kind of the same thing, but in different scenarios. And I think that the fine art world might be safe because when people are paying thousands or more for art, I think it's more about the artists that created it, right? I mean, I don't know how that 
world works and like i guess the rarity of the art is important too because that gives it a high resale value oh wait I just realized that I'm basically describing NFTs. Whoopsie, maybe AI art really is gonna give the fine art world a hard time. But like I said, I am not an art snob, certainly not an artist. This is just my uninformed opinion. But why not leave yours in the comments section below to stimulate the algorithm and leave a like before I get replaced by a four-eyed Catman AI.